What a gloomy, rainy day for a hike. We're in historic Bathaba Park in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And today, I wanna to take a look at what it takes to survive in this kind of area in the 1700s, at the time that a lot of European colonists like the Moravians were starting to settle this area. You wanna go on a hike with me? At the time that the Moravians came here to Pythabra, they were in the middle of a time period that was known as the Little Ice Age. And what that meant was that the environment was a lot colder than what we're used to today. That takes some unique survival skills to be used to that kind of environment, not only for the people, but for a lot of the wildlife that lived in this area. We have reached here after a hard journey over very high, terrible mountains and cliffs. A hunter, whom we had taken to show us the way, missed the trail and led us to a place where there was no way out except by climbing an incredibly steep mountain. Part of the way we climbed on hands and knees, dragging after us the loads we had taken from the horses. Part of the way we led the horses, who were trembling like a leaf. When we reached the top, we saw mountains to the right and to the left, before and behind us, many hundreds of mountains rising like great waves in a storm. The next day, we went on and came to a creek so full of rocks that we could not follow it, and with the banks so steep that horses could not climb them, and scarcely a man. We ate little, but our horses had absolutely nothing, and this distressed us. Shallow creek beds like this are a great place to look for signs of the things that used to be in this area. Looking around right now, it's hard to imagine, but everything from the looks of this area to even the sounds would have been completely different at the time that the Moravians came to this area. Right now, I hear the gentle trickling of water. I can see the light through the trees, the soft tweeting of birds. But can you believe it? At the time that the Moravians came here, this would have sounded more like a jungle. The trees here were not just filled with sparrows like we're used to today, but these colorful birds called the Carolina parakeet. They were a type of parrot that was known for being noisy and the trees were full of them. And the light coming through the trees, reflecting off the water, that would have been different too. Most of the trees around here are not really that big around because they're not actually that old. During the time period of the Moravians, European colonists were coming to the area and chopping down trees by the hundreds to use for building shelters and creating fire to cook their food. And what that means is that they were taking down trees that had previously been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. How old do you think this tree is? 50 years? A hundred? Now look around and imagine that all of the trees in this area are the same size or bigger than this one. That's what it would have looked like at the time that the Moravians were here. An old growth forest filled with dense underbrush, not nearly as much light coming in as what we have now. And that would completely change the kinds of animals that would live in that environment. Forested areas like this would have been kept in check at this time by animals like bison and elk who would uproot the young saplings before they could get to be big trees like this. What that means is that this part of North Carolina actually had areas that were grasslands. It's almost like something you'd imagine out west or in places like Alaska. But not too long ago, those animals were here, driven to extinction by overhunting once colonists started settling the area. The next day, the sun came out, and the days were warmer, though the night's still very cold. Now concerning the place where we are now in camp. It is a depression, a little oly, the richest we have yet seen in North Carolina. Three streams flow through it, and there are many sweet springs. There is an abundance of wood. 
Our horses have plenty of tender grass in the feeding grounds of the buffalo, and around the springs they eat eagerly. Hemp, oats, barley, etc. could all be raised here, and good hay fields made. But of course, humans weren't the only predators here. When we think about predators in North Carolina today, you might think of the occasional coyote, maybe a bear if you live in the mountains. But at this time period, red wolves were a real threat to groups of people all over the state. The wolves here give us music every morning from six corners at once. Such music I have never heard. They are not like the wolves of Germany, Poland, and Livonia, but are afraid of men and do not naturally approach them. Not only were they able to hurt people, but they were also killing livestock, and that threatens your food supply. That's a big problem. So the Moravians, well, they had a unique way of dealing with that problem. Several brothers are not well. Two went half a mile from here to dig a wolf pit. There are many wolves about, and our cattle are in danger. With this month, seed sowing began. The wolves have killed many of our calves this spring, and many others have died of starvation. Cattle and horses must look out for themselves in the winter here. If they live, they live. No hay is given them, for none can grow. And who could feed them on grain? Probably this is the reason that horses and cattle are so small in the part of North Carolina which we have seen, not larger than English colts and yearling calves. When the Moravians were trying to get their gardens started here in this area, they had to adjust the techniques that they knew to adapt to the environment that they were in. This meant growing crops that they were previously unfamiliar with and using gardening techniques that they learned from the indigenous people groups in the area. Things like how to grow pumpkins, which ended up becoming one of the major crops that sustained them through their first winter. If you see all the water collecting on top of the mud here, you can see how it's just gathering in puddles. That looks like a good sign that there's lots of water around, but really it means that the ground isn't soaking up the water. It's part of the reason why the Moravian settlers in this area had a really hard time getting their gardens started. This is the Hans Wagner cabin. It may not look like much right now, but when the Moravians first arrived to this area in the 1750s, it was already built and looking pretty inviting. A little bit like it looks to me right now. Let's get out of this rain for a minute. I think this might work out okay. Maybe a good time for a tea break. Let's take advantage of this shelter, which as you and I both know, is important to all kinds of survival. Apart from shelter, one of the most important things needed for survival is food and water. And that's true for humans and animals as well as plants. <sighs> On a cold rainy day like this, I'm really thankful for a hot drink and some food. When the Moravians first moved to this area in the 1750s, they really struggled with growing their crops. The snow is 18 inches deep. The fodder is nearly all used, so we cut maple and other sprouts and brought them so that our milk cows could eat the buds. To these, we added the straw from our beds, lest the cows, for lack of food, lose their milk. For this country, the winter is lasting unusually long. When I think about the passenger pigeons that were here in this area at the time period, and how they declined pretty drastically, it really comes down to things like food and the numbers of how many were here. In the fall, there were most unusual numbers of wild pigeons here. In many places, the woods where they rested for the night were ruined and the droppings were here and there shoe top deep. How do they die out so quickly? Well, when you look at how many there were, imagine all of those passenger pigeons having to compete for food. If it's just me and this one cookie, I'm doing okay on this hiking trip. But if I have to share this with four other people, we're all gonna go hungry. Little slugs like this are part of an important ecosystem in this area that all of the different species in the area depend on being in the right balance. Sometimes things get introduced that throw off that balance. Look at these broken ash trees behind me. It almost looks like a hurricane or a tornado came through. 
But in reality, this is the consequence of some of those things that have been introduced to this ecosystem from other places and how it throws off the balance. This damage was done by a species of beetle that was introduced to the area through trade and globalization. Something as small as a beetle can create disease in trees like these ash trees that does immense damage to this ecosystem. Take a look at this swampy area. This is what's known as a vernal pool. And these are very common here around Bethabra. Many of them have been created by beavers stopping the flow of what was once moving water. This area specifically was a flowing creek. And these changes don't just impact the water itself. They also impact the plant life around it. Take a look at this fungi. Fungi like this is only possible because of changes that have been made to this environment. The beavers allowed the water to slow down, which helps the decomposition of this wood. The tree is only decomposing because of those beetles that were introduced to the ash trees. That combination of decomposition and moisture is what allows this fungi to thrive. Vernal pools like this are also one of the best places to look for amphibian eggs, like salamanders, because these provide enough water for those eggs, but don't have fish that would eat them. North Carolina is home to over 60 species of salamander, which is the most diverse population of salamanders on the East Coast. One of the things that I feel like I've really gotten out of my hike today, when I look at everything that's here, really taking it in, I also have to acknowledge what's not here. When I look at the Carolina parakeet and the bison or the passenger pigeon, I look at the consequences of our actions. European settlers came into this area looking for ways to adapt the environment to their survival. And that's something that many species are doing, but ultimately that changes the ecosystem around us and it changes the balance for all the different things that live within that ecosystem.